afternoon. Uh, good, afternoon. <laughs> good, good, good evening, everyone. So I'm uh, I'm Ricky, one of the uh, developers of TRX here in Elogica. And aside from aside from programming, I'm also doing some uh, triathlon. So you mag sumag triathlon jan, <laughs> sumag pagod. <laughs> Gusto mahirapan sa buhay. So. I can teach you how to do that. But anyways, my topic for tonight is about fearless refactoring rails controllers. Now, I'm sharing this book in concept, hindi yung mismong book, by, uh, I don't know how to pronounce that, but uh, uh, he's the author of the fearless refactoring rails controllers. So, a uh, few months ago, actually last month, I created a Rails 5 experiment with, with Ember JS. And, um, so this Rails, Rails 5 is uh, part of the feature of Rails 5 is um, creating a new project as pure API, so no uh, no uh, views, etc. So so this is the uh, the working project of of uh, Rails 5 for the API with client. So the client part is uh, using Ember JS. <coughs> so most of us, so when we're dealing with API, we always uh, do this something like something like retaining a JSON with success true, and then the data, data JSON that we would like to parse uh, on the front end, uh, and of course this uh, the response stats for this is always 200. And regardless if the uh, data that we're looking for is present or not, we still uh, return the, the the status of this JSON da data as 200. But in fact, it should be returned as 400. So what are other other status returns supposedly of our API? So these are the most commonly used status in returning controllers uh, of API controllers. So uh, first one is 200, so which is uh, success. Second one is 201. If you're doing a new cre uh, create new record, and then the response of your status should be 201. And then if you de deleted a record via API, your response status is 204. And then if it's not found, then you always return as 400. And if it requires an authentication, then you should re uh, return the, the status of your JSON data as 401. But not always as success true. And then if it's not found, then you return it success false. And then you, and then you return an empty data. But in fact, you have to force returning the controller with, with status. Now, my topic for tonight is how to create a testable controller. Most of us, when we, when we test a controller, we, we test the details of the controller. That includes we, we try to parse yung, yung mismo data. But in fact, if we're testing the controller, our concern only, the controller's concern is these statuses. Okay? And then therefore, you will be asking me, eh, how about yung, ano, yung, yung dealing with the models, etc.? Then it's a different, ano, it's a different test. It could be a model test or a unit test. But if we're dealing with the controllers, controllers supposedly, uh, we've been discussing it with my, uh, uh, my partner in crime, <laughs> in TRX. Now, we, 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 don't have to be, uh, we, have, we don't have to be concerned about, with regards to the uh, inside the, the control method, method block. So we don't have to be detailed like, what's the next step? Then we'll use our spec. And then we, we, we are so detailed with our test that every line are tested. But supposedly, when we're testing controller, the only thing that we have to know is if it's successful, if it's created, if it's destroyed, if it's not found, or if it's unauthorized. All right? Then, it, then therefore, comes here yung unit testing, per se. So if you, you're using library for that, then you have a test for, for your unit test. And then if you have... Uh, model test in, in terms of what's the actual uh, return of this 200 for your 200 and then you do it in a different perspective. Now, let's take a first example of uh, and also um, I utilize the mini test of Rails 5 so I didn't use our spec here because uh, as much as possible my goal is I mean, minimize use of gem. So most, most of us Rails experience so familiar with too many gems available in the internet, but we have forgotten to utilize what's the maximum potential of Rails, Rails itself, diba? Right? So even though there is available mini-tests, most, most uh, Rails programmer 
uh, programmers, uh, they chose to use RSpec over Minitest. But they didn't see the power of simple tests using Minitest itself. Now, So let's take a look on the example of this index controller. Okay. So what we have here are different, different um, scenarios inside index. One is, uh, one is for, for supposedly this one is for guests, and this one is for authenticated. But then, I don't have any idea which part of this needs, needs uh, authentication and which part is for the guest. So an example of usage of this index is this. Nagpunta ako sa index na, sa homepage ng isang blog site, then I see some content. Those content are published. But then when I sign in as one of the author of the content, then I see some of the content with buttons that I can edit that within index page. Ah. And then some of the, then oh, if I have future and draft um, um, posts, I can also see that in my index page. Because... I am the owner of that uh, of those posts. But then, if the admin signs in, okay, I see all the posts with edit button that I can edit all, and also I can see my own post that um, uh, my, my my own future post if I'm an admin. But if I'm going to look at this one, your tendency is to test this one one by one before testing the last part, which is the status return. So when we test our index, our tendency is to check the return, if it's successful, then we make sure does this index return the right content? But supposedly, we, ha we have nothing to worry about with this, with this um, um, process. Because as you can see, API deals with the data. So it's active model. So therefore, if, if I'm going to look at this, at this um, controller, then I'm just only dealing with models. Okay. So the first thing that we need to do is how are we going to refactor this in order for us only to see the status to be returned by this index. So the first thing that we need to do is uh, let's take a look first with the test now controller, okay? So when you use the scaffold in APIs Rails 5, let's say scaffold, um, let's say um, a model or controller, etc., then it will create you um, basic mini test already and you will notice even the developers of of, of, of rails 5 you miss my uh, core developers of rails 5 they have given you a cert response as success uh, so this is default for for the um let's say for create blog it returns to 01 and then responds to 100 and then 204 for destroy so i didn't create this Rails, Rails 5 created this for me, but I modified it accordingly. So if you will notice also how, the, how, this, um, um, uh, how this control has been test, tested. So first the index, look at this one. So it, for, for the test index, we have different success, but then the part of the return here is for one. But you didn't see any test here that satisfies the condition is the real data has been sent, has been received. In fact, walang pakialam si controller doon sa data. His only concern is to return, to do something, to fetch and then response. Yun lang. But with regards to, uh, with regards to how many data inside the specific rec record, you don't need to test that inside the, the um, um, uh, for, for your index controller. So if you will going to ask yourself, so how are we going to test the actual output? And then when you check the model, then you have to do it here, some model, so sa sarili niya. Okay, going back here. So as you can see, there are different parameters that has been passed. And these parameters are headers. Since um, API deals with headers uh, uh, parameters in order to authenticate. So that is the HTTP request or request by HTTP headers. So, this, this first part, okay, this one tested the, if the, if the user is an admin, should, this, uh, should uh, return um, a success, okay? So, it means that this portion, there's something inside that index control that has been tested, pero hindi natin alam which is exactly 
what part of those na pinakita ko sa inyo kanina. So here. So our only goal is to reach the end. If there's no error, then there's a corresponding status response. As simple as that. But then, on our index controller, there are different conditions. There, there are different get re uh, requests with different parameters being passed. Okay? So, this one is 401, meaning, meaning you didn't pass any headers. That means that you don't have any access if you are passing offset and limit. So, it means for, for this offset and limit, if you have passed a, a header params or a user params, then you are allowed to get the data. All right. So if you're going back now to your, our to our controller, how are we going to refactor this? In order for this controller to be readable after refactoring it. So if someone check your code and then and then read your code, oh no documentation here. I don't know what will happen here. So ang gagawin natin test test. Uh, dito, um uh Iteration process, ah, ganun pala ang gawin niya, especially if, if there's a new hired, uh, newly hired uh, programmer. Now, we see here nested if else. Okay, so we have two nested if. So, we're going to simplify, simplify this whole as one, as one private method. So, let's see the, 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 this, the uh, new index controller. So what we have here is get all published blogs. If it's unauthorized, then return status agad 401. Sorry sir, malabo pala mata mo. Okay na? Galing biga pa. So as simple as that, I'll get all the published blogs, pero if it's unauthorized, pag nag-return siya ng authorized, then return status 401. Otherwise, this always, by default, this always return 200. So there's a there's a uh, there's a return um, uh, data here. Now, where's the get published blogs? So as you can see, it calls for a get all published blogs. Pero you can see the if else here. Kung tuto sa that represents the if else here. Itong block na to, right? So this whole block. It's represented by one private method, and then sabi niya, get all published blogs. Get all published blogs. Okay. <coughs> and then, another refactoring done here, these two blocks is represented by two different private methods again. So, so the first one, is get all published blogs for authorized user. And then the other one is get all published blogs for guest user. So with the, so from here, we already represented this block of code into more descriptive method. So we have your descriptive method. So if you're going here, get all published blogs, So we're now dealing with the if else inside the get all published blogs for authorized user. Because as we can see here, we have two types of, of users. One is an admin and the other one is the owner of the blog or the blog post. So at current user, check if it's authorized or not, otherwise, return unauthorized. So that's the first test being done here inside the controller. So if we're going back here, the return niya is, is get all published log unauthorized then return 401. Otherwise, proceeding. So get all published blog. So if this valid, and then let's proceed on getting all published blog for admin user. So this is the block for get all published for admin user. But then, there are two types of admin. One is super admin, and the other one is admin of your own blog or own blogs. So therefore here, there is um, another test here. Current user is an admin, and then you return this blog, number of, 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 of blog. So this will return all the blogs of the users. 
while the other one is we shall return only blogs to be admin by the owner of the blog post or the, the author itself. So this portion of blog is used for the uh, on the admin page. Sa admin niya ginagamit. So iba pa yung iba pa yung ginagamit natin for public. So this is for the public. So this one is this get all published blogs is for the admin page. So what if it's not an uh, authorized user? So let's check for the guest user. So tingnan natin naman sa guest user. So here's the for blog uh, for the uh, get all published blogs for guest user. Now, as you notice, bakit kailangan dalawa pa? Because I use a gem file here, uh, uh, a gem file, sorry, a gem uh, called Caminari for pagination. So um uh, the first part is if parameters is is prompts page is present, then I have to use this to render the or to get the the, the needed data. And then if not, parameters page is not present, meaning the first the first few or the first uh, set of uh, of of uh, posts ang iri return natin. So as simple as that. So from this from sorry. So from this controller. In this controller, then we arrive to this controller. Now, part of the uh, what have mentioned on this book is that if your controller, well, hindi may iwasan, there comes a time na yung method natin sobrang laki. Ang dami niya process. And according to the author, he suggested na you create another, another controller for that. So you simply call it, let's say, get all blogs controller but then it's the same ano the same uh, index pa rin, so the same uh, method pa rin ng call but you're going to specify which controller ang gagamitin mo this is to isolate especially if you have plenty of of uh, uh, private uh, methods that you have used just to simplify or refactor your controller and so that's the uh, and lastly uh So this is the test for the um, for whatever whatever is being called here. Dito sa private natin. So we have here blog by user, we have blog all publish. So all our model um uh, model method. So we have here by uh So publish by user. So you test it and re test the result. So most most um, programmers, when they have returned the uh, output for uh, okay for index, they also check the actual JSON data. They try to match it with with is the actual data that I'm expecting is returned. Then they parse the data or the JSON data here. But in fact, if we're going to check on how we refactored our controller and how how it supposedly returned our data. It only calls for a specific method, so just like this one, um, like uh, blog or publish. So you just simply you don't need to test this within your controller, but rather you just simply test this within your model instead. So your only concern now, as going back to my uh, our goal of for our goals, is just simply return the right status of your controller. As simple as that. And then I recommend I recommend this book if you have. Credit card. <laughs> I'm not saying this book, ah, because ano um, uh, we didn't get this for free. So one of our uh, uh, pro uh, developers here purchased this book, and uh, it was shared uh, to us. And I'm read uh, we're reading this book, uh, and and it's worth reading, no? So you can you can you can uh, check this uh, in the in the internet. Any question? La oh, question. <laughs> so if you want to get the actual file and if you want to study the the, the race file API, just, so just simply go to my GitHub, Ricky Hurtado, and then for the API. Yeah. So that so you can see the complete the complete um the, the complete uh uh setup of all the controllers that has been refactored already and that includes the test for models 
and 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 everything in it. So, how integration tests covering? So, for, well, the integration test goes in Ember JS, so it's a different topic. Ah, okay. So that that's why we don't need integration test in Rails API. That's why that's the that's why I, I focus on how to test controller and the actual return of the model instead, and then testing the pagination etc. etc. Si Rails, wala na siyang pakialam doon. Kasi we don't need to test the caminary ano eh, uh, pagination eh. It's, it's already been ano, working na kung working na, and then we don't have to worry about it. And then, that part, whatever it is, pagination o kung ano man, then, um, the integration test here, um, I created a branch here, Ember test. So, portion of the, just if you're just interested with the Ember uh, JSA. And by the way, one of the authors of em Ember JS is uh, uh, a former... Uh, co core contributor of Rails 4. I forgot the name. Yehuda. 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 Oh, basta yun. <laughs> so that's why when I move, so that's why when I move from Rails 5 to Ember, the approach for the VS is almost similar. So, uh, it's almost similar. It's, it's just so happened a different analyst structure, but the approach of creating views with partials, um, uh, partials are Rails 5, but components on on Ember JS. Anyways, so that that's where you put the integration test. Any question? Vicky Hurtado pre. guys. Yun na lang yung, yun na yung mga talk natin. Um, and, <laughs> so next month, uh, may plano kami na medyo mas fancy na meetup. So, <laughs> there you go. Medyo may, ano naman, may parang may giveaway lang stuff. Ganun. So para pang year ender lang. Kasi pag December, wala tayo usually meetup kasi wala nang pumupunta pag December. No. So, ayun. So, for November, ayun, may, may something na mangyayari. Tapos, ang venue is sa uh, Shield Foundry. Alright. Ayun. So, BGC pa rin. Ayun. Uh, thank you sa pagpunta sa meetup na to. So, despite dun sa store morning na mukhang wala, wala na yata, di ba? Wala na. Wala na yun. Bilis ng... Ayun. So, thank you sa pagpunta. Tapos, see you next month. Thank you, guys. Pagkain ka yata.